Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I've earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, to everybody who's watching, if you enjoy this video or get anything out of it, I would appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up button down below. It's a great way to show support and doesn't cost anything. And of course, if you'd like to take your support to the next level, you can visit eGuitarPlans.com or my Highline Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And there you can purchase plans for building guitars or the tools that we use to make guitars, as well as some cool t-shirts. And anything you spend is going to help support this channel so that I can keep building guitars and making videos teaching you how to build your own guitars. And of course, if you'd like to keep it really simple, you can just click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount you think is fair. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about in today's video, as the title would indicate, I ran into a little bit of a problem as I was applying the Sutherland Wells polymerized tongue oil on this guitar neck. It had nothing to do with the, uh, the oil itself. It had to do with the fact that when I looked at the neck in the right light, I could see some of the subtle tool marks left over from cutting the fretboard on my CNC machine. I thought I had sanded them out completely, but like I said, in the right light, I could see some of those tool marks still present. And I don't like that. I can't leave it there. Uh, you know, you can't feel them and you can barely see them, but just knowing they're there means I've got to fix them. Now, the beauty of using a product like Sutherland Wells uh, polymerized tongue oil is that it's very forgiving. Even after you've applied it and it's dried and fully cured, you can still go in and make repairs if you feel the need to do so. And in the case of this neck, what I ended up having to do was just go back and sand those areas where I could still see the tool marks. And I sanded them out, starting out with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I jumped to 320, then 400, 600, and then I finished sanding that area with 800 grit, getting it really smooth. But that meant I had to reapply the tongue oil just in those spots uh, where I had sanded away the finish. And what I ended up doing was I ended up applying the tongue oil over the entire surface of the fretboard. And then I would let it sit for about 20 minutes or so. And then I would go back in with a clean cloth and wipe off the excess off the top surface as well as on the sides. Because you have to be careful when you're doing spot repairs, if any runs down the sides, it's going to dry there. So I had to make sure that I wiped the whole thing down in a uniform and consistent manner. And then I would let it dry you know, overnight for roughly 12 hours. Then I came back, lightly sanded with the 800 grit, and then applied uh, a ne the next coat. And I did this over the course of several days until I had built up about four to five coats on the surface of the fretboard. And then I can let it sit for a good 24 to 48 hours to let it thoroughly cure. And then what I'm gonna do next is I've got to do some additional cleanup work, so to speak. I'll sand the top and the entire surface of the neck with 800 grit to get it really smooth and to remove any rag marks from applying the oil. But then what I have to do is I have to clean out the oil from inside of the fret slots. And this has to be done before I can um, um, start pressing in the frets. And in fact, after the last coat of oil was applied, I let it dry overnight for, you know, like I said, the uh, 12 hours. Then I came back with this kind of cool little tool that I purchased years ago from Stuart McDonald. It's designed specifically for cleaning gunk out of the fret slots. And even though the oil was allowed to cure, you know, for that, for that 12 to 24 hours, down inside the fret slots, it's still pretty gummy. So it's pretty easy to clean it out. But you want to get all those fret slots completely cleaned out before I start to install the frets because I'm going to be using CA glue and I don't want the CA glue to interact in any way with any excess oil or uh, material that has built up inside that fret slot. 
So I'm just going to go back and clean each and every single one of these out before I move on to installing the frets. All right, so the tool like I just showed you that I like to use for cleaning out the fret slots is this Stumac fret slot cleaning tool, I guess. Uh, it has a kerf of 0 0.020 inches and it has a saw blade at this end and then another one at this end. And they're both opposite in terms of the direction of the cut that they make. But this is ideal for getting down into these slots and cleaning out the crud that builds up when you're applying your finish. And you can use either end to clean out that stuff. You can also use an X-Acto knife. The only problem with an X-Acto knife is the kerf of the blade is quite a bit thinner than the actual slot. So what I would do is I would place the tip with the sharp end uh, facing out, and then I will slightly turn the blade at an angle and then drag it through, and that's going to remove some of that stuff. And you, you probably have to do a couple of passes, but you can see how much of that oil is built up in there. It's quite a bit. But that should do it. Another thing that you can use, I have, these are my nut slotting files, and this one in particular is uh, 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So you can use that also as a way to help clean out some of that crud. But that's one of the reasons why frets can be pressed in unevenly into a fretboard is because there's crud in the slot, whether it's sanding dust or residual finish, and it can inhibit the fret as it's being pressed in. All right, guys, well, that's all the time I've got for this video. And I promise you in the next video, I'll be installing the frets. I said it before, uh, but like I said, I ran into that little issue with the tool marks. So that kind of delayed things a little bit. So uh, in the next episode, I will show you the process that I'm gonna follow to press in frets on a guitar neck that has a conical radius with 16 inch radius at one end, 10 inch radius at the other end. And it's also, as you obviously can see, it is a multi-scale fan fret neck. So that poses some interesting challenges. So uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, and in the meantime, um, click the thumbs up button, visit eGuitarPlines.com, visit my Highline Guitars merch store, click the thanks button, leave a tip in the amount you think is fair. And I hope to see you back for more guitar building videos.